And good afternoon, everybody. This is Vinny Maletti with the Maletti Law, the strongest name in law. Uh, my name is Vincent Maletti. I am the leader, owner, founder, partner of Maletti Law, the law office of Vincent Maletti, and the founder of the Unusually Motivated Movement, uh, a movement of unusually motivated individuals that just can't find peace in peeling potatoes or can't find peace in just eating ramen noodles and they just got to be unusually motivated in everything they do. All right, so let's get down with it. This video has to do with class action litigation. So uh, I thought it was important to speak about this because you see this a lot. This is like a huge money maker for attorneys, right? So you have a, your standard employee claim. Employee comes in, says I didn't get pay overtime or, you know, I've been discriminated against. And the employee, the attorney, first thing the attorney asks, hey, are there, is there anybody else in your company that, you know, might have a similar claim, you know, trying to get you to do a little bit extra, trying to be a little more um, slimy and make more money. Uh, every, every attorney loves class actions because, you know, it's just more work. It's higher fees, higher statutory fees and damages and penalties, um, higher load stuff. It's just everything. It's just a better situation for an attorney. And plus, if they're one of these law firms that are just trolls and just have the system already built, then, you know, there's really no work to be done because they're, the, they've done it once already. So now they're just doing it over and over and they're churning them and looking to get a quick, easy settlement. So um, that's essentially where those are. But for those of us who want to challenge class actions because we think they're full of crap, uh, they're perfectly challengeable. It's just it's a little expensive, but it's perfectly challengeable. Um, and it's probably going to be cheaper than actually paying out and settling with these people. Uh, so here. All right. So here's what it is. So what's a class action? So you have a regular lawsuit where you're an individual, and then you have a lawsuit where you're an individual plus a class of people, right? That class has to be defined. Um, you know, it could be, you know, all people employed as a baker, all people employed as a waiter in a restaurant, um, you know, all similarly situated, non-exempt, meaning they get overtime, exempt meaning exempt from overtime, so um, it, could be a, it could be a specific group of people, whatever it is that's working at a specific location, there are two main statutes that you'll see these things in New York, uh, the Fair Labor Standard Act, the FLSA, and the New York Labor Law, the NYLL. These are two statutes that have to, that, you know, they'll talk about wage and hour claims, unpaid overtime, etc. New York extends it a little bit to like, um, you know, pay, pay statements, proper statements, identifying your deductions and everything, right? Again, I want to keep this limited just to the class action because, I mean, off the bat, one of the first things you want to do is you want to attack it head on. If you're going to defend this, you want to attack it head on. You want to be able to say what is and what is not a proper for class action certification because once you take the class action out of it, the, pros the possibility of certification out of it, that other attorney loses a lot of possibility for money. And that's nice because they don't want, attorneys don't want to work for money. Uh, attorneys don't want to work for free. I don't want to work for free. If you can make more money, it'd be a great idea. So that's a good thing. Knocking that out's a good thing. So you pay, it takes a little money up front from the defense side, but you knock it out tremendously and you, they lose a lot. So I actually do have a couple of notes here just to, because it's one of my unusual moments, which I am organized for this. So look, just to keep in mind, um, in order for something to be classified, certified as a class action, certified meaning the court approves it, it has to have um, the class who we're speaking about has to be numerous, that, you know, joining them together is basically impractical. So basically numerous meaning you have 50 people, 40 people. I think in New York, like anything under 25 is like suspect, anything over 25 is like, okay, between 25 and 40, you add toward class certification, anything over 40, class certification. So it has to be numerous, right? The first element has to be numerous. The class has to be numerous. The second element, there has to be uh, questions of law and fact common to everyone in the class. So everyone in the class has to be similarly situated. So meaning that they all have to be non-exempt employees that were just, you know, deprived overtime payments. But they all have to have certain facts and laws that apply to the class as a whole so they can bring that thing collectively together. Um, the third part is that uh, the claims and defenses of the plaintiffs that represent are typical of the class, meaning that the defenses, the the, the claims that the, the I'm sorry, the claims that the representative has. So there's the representative individual who brings on behalf of the class. The claims that the representative has has to be typical and similar to that of the class. So if the representative says you didn't pay me overtime, the class has to say you didn't pay me overtime. Like the representative can't, they can have their own claims, but you know that's something you would knock out. You try to knock it out, or that would be an argument in which you would beat up on. Um, the class certification. The fourth element is that the representative plaintiffs will um, fairly and adequately represent the interests of the class. The 
representative plaintiffs will fairly and adequately represent the interests of the class. Um, this means that the representative that's chosen on behalf of the class, so Vinny Maletti on behalf of himself and the class, this means that me, Vinny Maletti representative, if I'm bringing this complaint, I have to probably represent the class, meaning that I have to be basically in the same struggle there, and I can't have a separate set of claims, or I can't have a very different set of claims, or I can't have a situation where I eat them. There's a conflict where, let's say, you know, I'm a totally different class than the rest of the than the rest of the people. Let's say I'm, you know, in one situation. Let's say I am an exempt employee. I'm a manager, and I control all these subordinates, and I'm the one who controls. I mean, theoretically, that should be a conflict. So. Where you get hung, so where you get hung up in these cases is really the um, the circuit that you're in, right? So these are federal cases. If, if it goes into the FLSA, it's federal, so it's not state. You could try in state court, but I mean, if it's FLSA, you know, you can go in federal court because federal court will also listen to your state court claims. And uh, where you get caught up is the separate the second separate circuits, right? So like the second circuit, which has New York. And Connecticut is a different circuit than, let's say, Illinois, which I think is the third circuit. And the law is very different between them. So in Illinois, it's much easier to knock out a class action in the beginning, or at least knock out the class certification, versus the second circuit, which wants everybody to get their point, in, you know, which wants the plaintiffs to get their day in court. So, you know, that's really where you get hung up. Um, that's it. it be, I, I'm I'm finding in the case law that. You know, it seems to be like the Third Circuit, let's say Illinois, is a lot more willing to knock these things out as opposed to New York. So, um, I suppose the things in the Second Circuit, which is frustrating, but whatever, it, it is what it is, right? I mean, we'll try to get, you know, there's this case law everywhere, but I feel like knocking them out from the beginning on motions to strike um, in New York is, is going to be a little more aggressive. So, it's, you have case law, but it's not as freely knocked out as, um, it's not as freely knocked out as it would be in Illinois. So, you know, in that situation, you just have to go ham on the facts, you know? Like, you really have to, like, aggressively push hard on the facts to make sure, um, you know, to make sure a couple, you know, to make sure you get out of there. So, all right, so we went through the four elements, right? So, the four elements were that the class has to be numerous. We went through the fact that um, the, the facts of law have to be common to the entire class. So that's the second element. The third element is that um, the representative for the individual representative for the class has similar complaints as the rest of the class, as typical as the rest of the class. And that number, the fourth element is that the representative isn't contrary or in conflict to the class at any point in time. So this way they could actually represent them. Um, so that this is part one of the video. Those are the four uh, ways about class certification. Um, in the next video, not today. But in the next video, I'll probably start going into, like, how, what are, like, the steps to challenging it. Because, I mean, there are, again, there, there's there's a structure, there's a way to do it. There's a way there's a way to challenge class certification. Um, there's, like, about, like, five or six, I want to say five. There's, like, five main ways to challenge these things. And within these five ways, it basically encompasses everything. So, um, definitely want to, I definitely want to address that. But another video, because, you know, this is already eight minutes. And I gotta make, and I gotta have content for more. So if you have any questions, concerns, any um, thoughts on life, and you know why we do what we do and how we live it, you can let me know. You could email me. You could contact me in the uh, comments below. Um, I keep forgetting to say you should subscribe in the beginning. We should subscribe to this because the more subscribers we get, the better content I can produce because then I could brand my page and it looks really cool. Right now, you just, when you go to, it's not, you know, YouTube slash Melody Law, it's YouTube slash blah, 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 and all the stupid characters. I have no personality right now. I'm just a code to uh, YouTube. So get me up to 100 subscribers already so I can brand this page and I can make it sexy. Um, join the newsletter, do what you gotta do. I'm always here if you need me. As always, yours in the laws, love and lifts. And until next time, have a great day.